Hi, this is Peggy McNulty and welcome to Quantitative Methods. We'll be covering Chapter 8 in this section and we'll be covering the first two decision-making tools under the decision-making criteria chapter. So if you could pull open your PowerPoints and follow along with me and then we'll proceed. So let's first of all talk about what decision analysis is. And let me just show you this from the first PowerPoint and then I'll talk about it. So decision analysis is really a systematic approach to making decisions. And the key is that it should be based on logic, not opinion, not other viewpoints, but based on logic. And you should consider all possible alternatives, even if you don't think they're likely, because in our equal criterion approach, we can put a low likelihood on that approach. And then the third thing we want to keep in mind is we have to look at all the information we have to make a logical and reasonable decision. I think what you'll find interesting about this chapter is that two companies could be given the exact same data, but if they have a different decision-making criterion at their company, they might make completely different decisions based on that criterion. For example, if a company is more optimistic and their perception is that they will have high demand in a new market, they might decide to launch in that, in that product or to build a new factory. Other companies given the same data might be worried about the worst case scenario and might want to try and minimize their losses and pick a maxi-min criteria, which is a little bit of an EOR approach, which would minimize a loss if the worst case scenario happened. So those are the two criteria we'll be talking about, the maxi-max approach, which is more of a positive approach, and the maxi-min. Let's talk a little bit about industries that might use the maxi-max and the maxi-min criteria. Currently, in the construction industry, green construction is experiencing a boom. So many of the executives in the green construction industry are considering a maxi-max approach and expanding their, criteria, their market in that area of construction. In the journalism, newspaper industry, for example, Many uh, newspaper publishers are looking at a maxi-min approach where they are looking at the worst case scenario and trying to understand what would minimize any kind of loss in a worst case scenario. Neither one is the right or wrong answer. It depends on your industry and the viewpoint on your industry. And the third point I would like to make about this is one of the options we'll go over is to a do nothing option. And in no way could that always be the wrong decision or a poor decision. Sometimes not entering a market is the safest or best decision for your company. So oftentimes we'll have a do nothing option and that could be a perfectly acceptable option for your industry. So what I'd like to do now is talk a little bit more about uncertainty and certainty. So if you could move to the next slide, we're gonna talk about decision making environments. So it's uh, slide number six and this is what it is here. So there's three types of situations that an executive might be making a decision or a manager. The first one is making a decision under certainty. What that means is you're making a decision when all outcomes are known. That does happen in industry, for example, in inventory management. If you know what all your inventory is in a warehouse, for example, and you're trying to make a decision as to what other distribution centers or retailers to send your merchandise to, you know all the material you have, you know the centers you're going to, and you're going to optimize your answer. In that case, you're going to use the tool called linear programming. That's a chapter we're going to cover next after chapter eight. So please be aware that is still a possibility, but we're not going to work on that until next lecture. The other uh, decision making you can make is under uncertainty, and that's when you're thinking about the future. We don't know what the future will hold, and so what we're trying to do now is minimize risk, risk or maximize profit when we don't know what the future will hold. We have a prediction or a thought, but we don't know. So that's what I'm going to cover. And we'll cover two of those decision-making methods in this segment, maxi-max decision-making and maxi-min. And then there's a third type of alternative in a decision-making environment, and that third alternative I will show you here. And that's decision-making under risk. When decision-making under risk happens, companies are starting to look at their opportunity costs, the what-if scenario. What if I had done this? How much money would I have made? And so opportunity risk is a third area that we'll look at later on in this chapter. Today, we'll focus on decision-making under uncertainty. What will the future bring? And that is our key theme today. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a company called Thompson Lumber. If you could pull that up, I will show you that here on this slide. If you could pull it up. What I'd like you to do 
is to take that information and continue to use it here. So here it is. And this is, this is Thompson Lumber. So what I'd like you to do is take a piece of paper, and if you could, create four columns. The first column is going to say alternative, and then you're going to write high demand, medium demand, and low demand on your, on your table. So if you could, please put this on hold and create your chart. Turn this back on when you have your chart done, and we'll go through how to do a maxi-max decision using the data we're given. Okay, did you get that done? Excellent. Okay, so your fourth, your fifth column after low demand is going to say choice, and it will look a little bit like this. Do you see the choice column? Okay, I have the answers there, and I'll tell you how I got them. So if you first look at your criteria, we're going to let the words be our guide. So it says maxi max criteria. We're going to look at the word maxi max and let us and let that guide us on our decision on working on this matrix. So you're going to look at the second half of the word first. So it's called maxi max. So you're going to look at that second portion of the word called max. That's going to guide us on what number to pick out of each row to put in our choice column. So if you look in column one, our choices are two hundred thousand dollars, one hundred thousand dollars, and losing one hundred twenty thousand dollars. So looking at that max criteria, what is the largest number in that row? Did you get 200,000? Because that's correct. That's the largest number in that row. In the next row, the largest number is 120,000. And in the third row, the largest number is zero. So you list all three of those largest numbers for the row into the choice column. And this is maxi max criteria. So it should look like this. Based on that information, you're going to use the second part of the word maxi max. You're going to use the maxi part. And looking at that maxi part, you're going to pick the largest number in that column. And the largest number in that column is $200,000. So what that means is if Mr. Thompson is, a, is using the maxi max decision making criterion, he will create or build a large plant and is expected to have revenue of $200,000. Okay, you guys good with that? All right, now let's look at the second scenario we're going to cover today, and that is the maxi-min criteria. Perhaps you could look at it as an Eeyore criteria from Winnie the Pooh. So if you're thinking the worst possible scenario could happen, what, could you, what option could you select that would minimize the negative impact of the worst case scenario? This happens in the pharmaceutical industry quite a bit. Uh, risk analysts will look at the possibility of a negative outcome of a pharmaceutical product and determine if that negative outcome could be so great that it's not worth it to launch the product from a consumer health perspective. And so the maxi min criteria tends to work very well in industries that have a perceived high risk um, in their options and want to minimize that risk. So let's look now at our next scenario. So if you could create a sixth column and put maxi min choices in. We're going to let the words be our guide and you've got maxi min. So you're going to look at the second half of the word first, min. Okay, so that's a trigger that when you look through each row, you're going to look for the minimum number. So what's the lowest number in row one? Let's take a look. The lowest number is negative 120,000 or a loss of $120,000. So what that means, if there's low demand and we build a big plant, the worst thing that could happen is we lose $120,000 in the build, build a large plant scenario. If we build a medium plant, what's the worst thing that could happen? And look at the chart to see what's the worst thing that could happen if you build a medium plant. You could have a low demand scenario where you lose $20,000. And then if you do nothing, what's the worst thing that can happen? You make no money, but you lose no money. So you put those three numbers in the choice column for maxi min, and you've got negative $120,000, negative $20,000, and $0. So we did the min part now of maxi min. Now we're going to look at the maxi part. What is the largest number in that column? The largest number is zero. So what that means is if we want to minimize the impact of a worst case scenario, we would not launch the product at all. That can be an appropriate answer. It's, it's not a lazy answer. It can be very much the appropriate answer. 
So if the board of directors at Thompson Lumber is very much concerned about risk and the money that they have invested and they don't want to lose their money, they might want to go with that alternative. So that's how the scenario works. You could come up with similar scenarios in the same situation in the stock market and building a portfolio. A lower risk option might be bonds, municipal bonds. A higher risk option might be the stock market. A similar type of decision-making criteria happens for consumers and those people that help them invest the money. So that concludes the first two types of decision-making criteria, maxi-max and maxi-min. In our next section, we will talk about the equally likely criterion, where there's an equal chance of high, medium, or low demand. We'll talk about Hurwitz, which is the criterion of realism. If your company believes there's an 80% chance of high demand and a 20% chance of low demand, we could do a weighted average to calculate what our outcomes could be. And then we could look at the opportunity loss. Gee, what would have happened if I had bought gold in 1980? Gee, what would have happened if I bought Apple 20 years ago? And then you can look at what your opportunity cost was if you had made that decision. So it's called the opportunity loss. The what if scenario. If, if I did not make this decision, how much would it cost me? So we'll talk about that next time. We'll talk about opportunity loss, um, averaging, the average criteria or equally lightly, and the Hurwitz, the criterion of realism. So please feel free to go back through this. I have several homework problems for you to work on to reinforce your learning. I also have the solutions posted. So please go through the information. And I think you'll find it quite interesting how the same data can lead to very different outcomes based on your criteria. Please contact me if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Have a great day. Bye.